Welcome back everybody to the Stock Martians YouTube page. Want to remind you, please like, subscribe, comment any tickers down below that you want us to review. You've been following along the last few days some really important information that we've got for you. Today is a little bit along those lines, but more importantly, some important information about GME specifically. Here to bring you that news is Flash. Thank you, and please, everybody, we're almost to 1,000 subscribers. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that bell for all of our future updates. Today, like you said, it's exclusively GME. We've got a couple catalysts that I want to talk about, one that was just announced today, but then uh, a little news article that came out about uh, somebody in the SEC asking a uh, basically posing um, some information towards the hedge funds. Mm -hmm. And I want to read that off to you because it kind of relates to what BlackRock has, has kind of told us before. So first we're going to start at the chart. We had a boring day, negative 0.5% on the day to be exact. Uh, nothing really happened in the market except for the spy went crazy. And <laughs> yeah. basically uh, <laughs> the, the hearing was boring. Roar and Kitty didn't even get to talk. But now let's get into the information. All right, so here we can see that the SEC acting chair, Allison Heron Lee, said disclosure rules have failed to help everyday investors, which I definitely agree, and called the MPX forms that companies file unwieldy, difficult to understand, and difficult to compare across fund complexes. It is high time to revisit this critical form and make it useful in creating needed transparency around the fundamental exercise of shareholder voting. Yes. Now, right. this is... Uh, very very similar to an article I showed you two days ago. And this is the one where we were kind of linking Biden and, and uh, BlackRock together in the beginning, uh, talking about uh, basically clean energy and how they're, they're moving towards a different type of investing strategy. But this sentence here says uh, it would enhance, that they would enhance transparency over how it votes in shareholder meetings of firm firms in its portfolio. So that's basically reiterating that um, they're doing what they're doing what the politicians want them to mm -hmm. do. They're increasing this transparency. They've already vowed to do that before this meeting has ever occurred. Before the SEC chairman has said this, uh, you know. So I think that this is a, another, you know, subtle but but link that says that BlackRock is making all the right moves. They're doing all the right things to be in good standing with the White House, with the people who make the rules. Uh, and and I mean, I think this is. Uh, another bullish uh, sentiment that we can take away from this. Uh, I'm bullish, more bullish than I've ever been on this. And also, we had another interesting article today posted by Market Watch, and this isn't something that Market Watch normally does, but just talk positively about GME. <laughs> so it was kind of scary almost. So it says a tail is a precursor of a stock's next move, and investors in GameStop look for these indicators all the time. The good news is tails are there for investors to see every day. For example, we have provided this data for GME in the trading plans and summary table offered below. I'll link this in the description so you can look at this table. Mm -hmm. But basically, it is going to show you this. GME, the GME short resistance plan. None. There is none. <laughs> no short resistance. There are no current resistance levels from the summary table they provided. And therefore, there are no short resistance plans which tell us mm -hmm. to short upon tests Man. of resistance. Resistance levels have broke higher, and unless the stock reverses lower and below support levels again, short positions look risky. Wow. Melvin, you're looking risky, buddy. Oof. Citadel, you're looking risky, man. Oops. You're, doing some, you're doing some risky stuff. Yeah. So for the two catalysts here, so here we go. Let's jump into this. I just wanted to show you all that. The GameStop credit card. Announced today. <laughs> nice. Many stores offer perk-filled credit cards, but GameStop was the first retailer in the gaming-only niche to do so. So let's t give you the takeaways here. The GameStop Power Up Rewards credit card is an extension of the retailer's loyalty program, which we all know, love, and used to use all the time before COVID. And they offer multiple points of purchase, so you can use this card either in GameStop stores or on their GameStop website. The GameStop credit card has two membership levels, and like most merchant cards, the Power Up Rewards credit card carries no annual fee, but a high interest rate. Yeah, that sounds good perfect for income, support, right? <laughs> right, perfect way to support GameStop, perfect way to build your credit. Um, you know, look, buy buy all your games, either the digital or online from GameStop, buy all your new controllers, all your headsets, all your other memorabilia uh, collectibles, Use this credit card, pay it off in a timely manner. You help GameStop, you help yourself. Just win, win, win. Right, and not that we're encouraging people to take out more credit cards and go more into debt with high interest rates or anything, but again, if 
if that is a financially sound decision for you and you want to help benefit things like this, then might as well, right? Right, and it never hurts to have a, a good positive line of credit with a good payment Absolutely. History. So here's the big one here, and we already kind of knew this was going to happen, most of us. Uh, GME announced that they were going to give their fourth quarter and fiscal year 2020 earnings on Tuesday, March the 23rd of next week. So they are going to have a conference call at 5 p.m. Eastern time. Now, you can go to this website to get more information, investor.gamestop.com. Again, we're going to link this. Uh, and you can also call this number here and enter this confirmation code or join by phone. And this this website also gives you a link to where you can listen through webcast. I'm definitely going to be listening to this. I think they're going to give some good information. And it's speculated that they may be announcing. Now, this is just a rumor, but you buy the rumor, right? They may be announcing either an increase in share float or a buyback of shares, which Bank of America kind of suggested that would be good for mm -hmm. them to do. So either way makes things interesting and could serve as a really good spark to get the shares moving. Now, I also want to touch on one thing about their fiscal, their fourth quarter results. So it's no, no uh, secret that the fourth quarter for GameStop is normally really good. Of course. And it's especially good whenever a new game, uh, console cycle comes through. So the PS5 and the Xbox Series X just recently came out. And, you know, with the GameStop hype, with the trend, the support, most people that I know, at least, and online are only buying their PS5s uh, and their Xbox Series X from mm -hmm. GameStop, and as along with, uh, along with their games controllers and accessories. Look, I think that their fourth quarter earnings are going to be way better than anybody is expecting. And I think if the 19th doesn't pull anything crazy on us, that this is going to serve as another huge catalyst to get people behind it. And, of course, a lot of people got their stimulus check. I got my stimulus check right, today. Me too. So I think a lot more people are going to be getting there very soon. Nice. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Let's get to 1K. Thanks, guys, and have Thank a great Thank you very night. much, Flash. See you all later.